still a long way to go in this game, that's for sure. And the Eagles certainly have some things to get figured out. First of all, uh, how to stop Monica Schmidt on the offensive glass as she's been getting those rebounds, and then that's how she creates easy opportunities for herself. But with that said, the Eagles still doing a very nice job so far in this game with the 18-13 lead. And I mean, Mercedes Harris, once again, having an excellent night. And uh, you saw it last night. You see it again tonight. You see it every night, really. Uh, just very productive, very high field goal percentage because she takes the majority of her shots from inside the paint. And um, as a result, very high percentage shooter, very efficient player. And the Eagles, that's the, really their strength, is their play down in the paint, in the post area, with the likes of uh, Matthews, uh, Rose, Harris, uh, Devin Blake when she's healthy. And uh, you're really seeing it tonight. You s definitely saw it last night with Mercedes Harris scoring most of her points from inside of 10 feet. When you have the kind of size the Eagles do and the, the type of post players that the Eagles do, why shoot long jump shots? Get the, feed the ball inside and let them go to work. Well, the Eagles will start the second quarter with Harris, Hinton, Wise, Matthews, and Rose out on the floor. The referee talking to the scorer's table about something, and Satterton's going to use that to get a little extra time out and talk to their players. I don't know what exactly it is that they're straightening out. I guess a, some kind of a substitution that Satterton wants to get done. I think they wanted to bring Monica Schmidt back into the game, but they're not going to be able to. They were too late with it, so now they have to wait till the next time out. Probably just a minor detail, but we'll see how this game plays out. Hinton with the ball now for the Eagles, who own the first possession of this second quarter. Harris getting it to Rose. Rose can shoot the three, even though she also plays very well in the paint, like Mercedes Harris, for example, who gets one there. Perfect example of what we were talking about, what all the Eagles can do. Brittany Sandon got a step on Wise. She was fouled. That was a good-looking pass to Jessica Bard, but it doesn't matter because she was fouled first. They'll call that a shooting foul. They're going to call it Matthew second and it sure looked like she was in the act of passing as opposed to shooting but uh, with the ball it moving in the relative direction of the rim could easily be construed as a shot so two shots for Brittany Sandone and she makes good on the first Sandone's second can make it a five point game and it does as it's now 20 to 15 after Sandone went two for two on that trip Here's Wise now being double teamed and giving it up. Good pressure in the backcourt by Satterton. And they end up with an easy basket out of it to Liz Mower. That's what Narstown is usually doing to the opposition as opposed to vice versa, which you saw right there. They're usually pressing, getting steals, and then getting easy baskets. This time, they got a taste of their own medicine. Here's Hinton getting it inside to Harris. Puts it up. Why not? But it's no good. Emily Price hauls it in. And we'll take it down the floor. Rose picks her up. Now they get it into the corner. And inside to Schmidt, who was good in the first quarter. Puts it up, puts it in. And just like that, it's a one-point game. That's as close as we've been all night, uh, with the exception of 0-0. Zero to zero. Here's Hinton, rifling it inside to Harris, who puts it up, had it blocked. But they call a foul. That's Monica Schmidt. Uh, who thought she had a clean block, but instead picks up a personal foul. That's the second on her. And the Eagles, with their um, strengths inside, they love to use their inside players. Monica Schmidt's going to have to play some defense and might pick up some fouls, which could become a factor. We know Matthews has two. She's uh, currently over on the bench talking things over with um, Ashley Harrison. Well, not on the bench, but in the bench area receiving instruction. But I'll tell you, if either one of those players, Matthews or Schmidt that is, picks up another foul, they're going to have to sit for a little while because uh, that's when you're in foul trouble. Here's Harris. 
missing the second, and it's 21-19. Harris able only to manage one, and Mower missed the long two. And uh, Brittany Sandon can't get a jump shot either, but another offensive rebound for Souderton. But another missed jump shot. Here is Brittany Sandone. Sandone gets it to Mower, who puts it up, doesn't get it. And it's rebounded by Natasha Matthews, who's double teamed and gets fouled. It's just the fourth team foul on Satterton, so not yet in the bonus. The Eagles will inbound. And um, the Eagles and Ashley Harrison elected to keep Natasha Matthews in the game with two personals. Satterton not taking that same chance with Schmidt, who has two and is now on the bench. That's a great thing for the Eagles on both sides of the ball as Kundred gets a steal and Sandone picks it up and has it stolen away by Cash Day Hinton. Now the Eagles move in transition and Hinton decides to slow it up as it was pretty much a four on four. Matthews puts it up, doesn't get it, but a foul. And with Schmidt out of the game, you saw uh, the offense, a lot of long jumpers that weren't falling. And when you don't have a player like her to get you inside shots close to the basket, you're forced to take those jumpers and their lower percentage shots. Meanwhile, the Eagles still couldn't rebound the ball well, even without uh, Schmidt, Satterton's tallest player, on the floor, and Matthews makes the free throw. Well, Satterton will make a couple of substitutions here, but still no Monica Schmidt, who has two fouls. Matthews hits the second. Of course, Schmidt's such a valuable asset to the Satterton team. They can't afford for her to pick up a third with five and a half minutes to go in the second. That would really limit uh, their options with her for the rest of the game. If I were in this situation, I would, I would actually be playing Monica Schmidt right now and taking my chances. But that's just me. Wally drives inside because he doesn't get it. And Matthews has yet another rebound. Boy, I don't know where the Eagles would be in terms of rebounding without her. They struggled even with her to rebound the ball well defensively as Harris puts in another short little jump shot. And it's 25 to 19. Nice pass inside. Here's Jessica Bard who tries to get it back out and threw it away. And not to uh, continue on the point too much, but if, if Schmidt's in the game, that's where she's playing. And with the talent she has, I don't know that she throws that ball away. I think she responds to that pressure better. But here's Rose. Don't count that shot. Traveling. Brittany Rose shuffled her feet and turns it over. Well, since the Southerton Indians made it a one-point game, the Eagles responded with a 5-0 run, and it's now 25-19. I'm Mark Hollidensky. You're watching NASD TV. Here he is Bard passing it off to... Avery Britton, Wise nearly stripped it away. Instead, gets called for the foul. That's the sixth on Norristown. So um, on all fouls for the rest of the half, Satterton is going to shoot free throws, but not on this one, as they used up their last foul to give. Here is... Avery Britton being guarded by Wise, who now has still just one foul. And a whistle here. And they call a foul on the Eagles, I believe. Four minutes and 12 seconds to go in the half. It's still 25-19 Eagles. And Satterton with the inbound and can't find anything off the inbound, but do get it inside and get a basket to cut it to four. The deficit for Satterton now four. More full court press by them. It's been pretty successful, but now they end up with a foul due to it. Well, this game... Um, I believe the largest lead by either team is six. Uh, so two pretty evenly matched teams, it appears. And it's really a good sign to see this Eagles team. Really, they've had the lead all game as Harris couldn't get another one. 
Harris, or the Eagles, with the lead the entire game. And it, again, it's a very promising sign because this is a very talented Southampton team that will almost certainly be in the district playoffs and will even have a chance of getting to states. And if the Eagles can get a win against them, it'll do wonders for their chances of doing the same. There's another foul on Norristown. Not a shooting foul, but now the Satterton Indians are shooting one and one on all fouls. So going to the line will be number 20, Jessica Bart. And um, the Eagles, for the first time in this game, bring in number four, Nicole Grant. Younger sister of former Norristown boys point guard, Russell Grant. The free throw was no good, and uh, Harris got it with a running start, gave it to Hinton, who gave it right back, but Harris couldn't finish. And now, uh, with a retaliatory foul, that's not a good foul, but uh, boy, Eagles running the transition well in terms of passing, as Harris really scooped it up with a running start. Nice dish off to um, Hinton, who, being the unselfish player she is, gave it right back. Gave Harris a pretty good look. Unfortunately, not able to get it to finish and then committed a foul. That gives uh, Wally to free, or one and one for Satterton. It's never good when um, the opposition is able to walk the floor and shoot free throws because of a foul uh, going for the rebound. The second free throw can make it a two point game. But it's no good. However, Satterton gets a rebound and a putback opportunity, but they miss it. And they call a held ball. The possession arrow is with Satterton. So they'll keep it in just a three point game. They shoot the three for the tie, but it's no good off the glass. That was. Brittany Sandone unable to get it done. And with three minutes to go in the second quarter, it's 25-22 Eagles. Graham playing the point guard right now. Getting it back to Wise. And now it's Graham again. Back to Wise as uh, Wise and Graham play a little catch here, looking for the offense to develop. Now here's Hinton with the pass off to Graham. Back to Wise. Two minutes, 44 seconds to go now. And Hinton is going to put up a three. It's no good. The rebound to Jessica Bard for Satterton. Emily Price now nearly having it taken away. On the floor, rolls it to Jessica Bard. Bard had it taken away. And Graham just picked it up and on the run and continued to run right out of bounds. Maybe expecting a foul or maybe just unable to stop herself. Either way, not a bad defensive play. Unfortunately, she was unable to save it. Bard with a nice layup there, using that size inside and getting two, and it's 25-24. Here's Harris. Taken away by Emily Price. Puts it up, gets it, and the Satterton Indians have their first lead of the game. And it comes with two minutes and three seconds to go in the first half. And um, Ashley Harrison wants timeout. Well, we mentioned how it was a one-point game uh, just a few moments ago. And then the Eagles went on a nice little 5-0 run to regain control. Since then, seven straight points by the Southerton Indians. So with all momentum against them, the Eagles wisely using a timeout. So Ashley Harrison drawing up a play for the offense, but she's also got to be trying to get these girls uh, to just focus and forget about that little run they just gave up. You got a one-point deficit. You're, you're still in good shape if you continue to play hard and, and erase the, the past. At least the recent past, because uh, in the first quarter and early in the second, this team played great. Wise to Harris as the Eagles trying to break that full-court pressure. They do. Here's Rose back out to Wise. The pass over to Hinton, who, in trying to make a move, ended up being dealt a traveling violation. So the Eagles 
will try to prevent Satterton from further extending their 7-0 run. Satterton doing uh, most or all of this without one of their best, if not their best, player, Monica Schmidt, in the game. Here is Hinton. Stops, pops, gets it. Kesha Hinton deposits two more, and that stops the run as Wise gets yet another steal. Back-to-back -back possessions result in Antoinette Wise steals. This time she gets it, and a foul. So uh, yet again in this game, Antoinette Wise providing a huge spark as she gets the steal that leads to the uh, Hinton shot, and now gets a steal that leads to her own basket, plus a foul. We've already seen her making a couple of hustle plays in this game, and again, providing life for the Eagles when all momentum was really against them. Wise coming off of the game in which she, like Natasha Matthews, was second on the team with six points, and she gets the free throw here. Well, these teams could, it's a game of runs. Basketball's a game of runs, and now the Eagles are on a, a little 5-0 run, responding to what Satterton did moments ago. Here's Wise picking it up. Has a two-on-two, -two, gets it to Hinton, puts it up and doesn't get it. Satterton got the rebound, but she was tied up while he was by Mercedes Harris. Possession, arrow, favors Norristown. One minute and change to go in the half. The clock starting to become a little bit of a factor. The Eagles, if they have an extremely long possession, could even take the last shot, but it's probably a little early for that as Rose got an open look at a three, so she took it but it wasn't even close. Rose, uh, one of the better three-point shooters on this team, but unable to get it there as Bard gets a basket down at the other end. And now we got 39 seconds to go in the half, and it's 30 to 28. We got a high scoring and close battle on our hands tonight between two very good girls basketball teams. Rose fouled. Nearly able to get the and one, but couldn't control it well enough. So she'll settle for free throws. Rose, however, happens to be an excellent free throw shooter, and we'll just have to hope that I didn't jinx her. First one is good. Well, this last half a minute in this half could be really important because uh, whoever wins it is going to have the momentum going into halftime, and Rose missed the second. It's just so important to close out quarters and, and more importantly, halves well. It's just does so much for you mentally, as well as help on the scoreboard. That's a long two, but it's no good from Emily Price. And the rebound goes to the Eagles and Cash Eye Hinton, who's trapped along the baseline. But now gets it to Graham, who, if she hurries, will have an advantage because of the trap along the baseline. Hinton takes the three with time winding down, doesn't get it. Rose gets an offensive board, has to put it up, does, doesn't get it. Brittany Rose beat the clock, but couldn't get the basket to go. And we've reached halftime. The Eagles, 31. The Indians, 28. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for the second half of this game in just a moment. 